We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. Picking up where we last left you in our Baja Bound series, after crossing the border twice and making our way three hours down to our first camping spot in San Felipe, today we continue our journey along the Trans-Peninsular Highway en route to sunny skies and warmer temperatures. And wait till you see what we discover. Just wanted to capture this in case you guys are wondering why we don't have drone footage. We just ran into spirit with the drone. I ran into spirit with the drone. Basically, we clipped the side of the van and the way it hit created this gap where it can't allow the camera to move within the gimbal right there. You can see the motor right there in that gap. Maybe there's a drone mechanic a drone somewhere. Doctor. Yeah, a drone doctor, anyone. Noticing that all the propellers were still intact, we decided to give it a test flight. Never done that before. <laughs> First well. time for everything. Maybe I can fix it, maybe I can't. We still got a bird's eye view, even if that bird's a little crooked. At this point, we had traveled just under 300 kilometers, or about 175 miles, south of San Felipe. And we're searching for a somewhat 4x4-ish kind of spot for the night that we had found on iOverlander. Uh, wait. It looks softer. I don't like it. We're turning around. <laughs> I could. All right. Paths are getting soft. We're on the hunt. Let's go check and see how hard the sand is before we actually attempt to drive over it. That's some soft stuff there but maybe I can go and check it out and see if it looks like a good spot to park ahead up here. We are in the middle of freaking nowhere. I feel like we could park in any of this stuff. Let's see, it is pretty hard. Somebody had definitely parked right here. I think this would be a great spot to camp. I guess we just gotta get past that initial mushy stuff. It's kind of this ominous, gray, misty, overcast evening here in the Baja. I certainly don't wanna let us get stuck out here in the middle of nowhere without other hands to push. I don't think Brittany would appreciate getting stuck either. We're going for it, babes. It's always a wild ride. <laughs> I always feel a little bit nervous on these sandy roads. Mm -hmm. Lucky Blue's holding on. All right, we made it through that soft stuff. Let's continue this journey. Drew is a wizard. I think he just fixed the gimbal. Hopefully it works and the gimbal is not overloaded anymore. Please gimbal be healed. <laughs> For any of you who have drones out there, you know exactly how frustrating it can be when you go to plug it in, it says gimbal overloaded. Guess we'll know tomorrow. Sun is shining. Welcome to Off Grid Life in Baja, where we remember how to do things like read our books. The rain stopped and the sun is out. It is. It's going to be a beautiful day.
Drew and I slept so well last night listening to the pitter patter of the rain on the van. It was so peaceful and we had zero distractions from our phones. Because like most of Baja, where we are now in this remote, absolutely beautiful and wild place, there is zero reception. No Wi-Fi, no cell phones, nada. And we were discussing that it's been a really long time since we've been this deep into the off grid. <laughs> but that's the Baja way. And the further south we go, the more places like this we're gonna find. It's only in the villages where we'll be able to have any connectivity. So we got our Telcel SIM cards yesterday in town and hopefully that's how we'll be able to share our videos with you guys. But when they said it was the land time never touched, that means Wi-Fi never touched it either. And there is something so beautiful about that. We need more places like that in our lives, I think. Oh, there's that big cloud. Wait, get a little stuck. No. Maybe because it's cold? <laughs> Gimbal motor overloaded. What does that mean? Alright, it seems like it's okay now. Maybe it's just really touchy. Okay. Fly free! Yes! The drone is back! Ah, oh, that feels so good. Oh what a relief. My Praise the heavens. Fly to the heavens. <laughs> what was so tragic to me about the loss or potential loss of our drone was that we haven't had a drone accident in like over two years. And this crash was literally like within the first few days of being in Baja. So having him back to life is the best possible outcome. That's it. never seen a rainbow like that in my life. Wow. This is so beautiful. Those are their streets all flooded like that. Yeah. This truck driving through it, that's cool. Necesita diesel. Little doggy. Two two. <laughs> two two. You gotta Time move. Time for us to get gas. Good boy. I know you were sleeping. Yep. You know, for work. This is our first gas stop in Mexico. They actually pump the gas for you. So at that price, it comes out to about four dollars per gallon of diesel right now. California prices. <laughs> Give him a little tip too. And our tank is topped off and full. We made it past the really long stretch where everybody gets concerned about not having gas. And we are almost this close to Baja Sur. We are in Jesus Maria, about to cross over into Negro Guar. Guero Negro. About to cross over to Guero Negro. So we're happy to report that finding gas was not a problem, nor was the kind of gas a problem either, because we had heard horror stories about the low sulfur diesel, but nope, we've just had exactly the kind of diesel that we need, and Spirit has been running smoothly. I think the fact that she has a pretty big tank also made the long stretch without any gas stations not a problem. It was 250 miles from San Felipe down to this gas station and I saw one or two gas stations but they were closed when we passed yesterday. So I'm glad this was available. We could have squeezed out 330 miles on our gas tank here on Spirit. And I'm just distracted. Loving all the dogs. Yeah. There's like a little powwow. <laughs> There's a little burrito place. I think I'm gonna go get a burrito. Let's do it. Yes. Two burritos for me. 
Oh. ¿Es esposa? Sí. sí. Ok. Hola. Hola. ¿Tú te hablas más español? Un oh, poquito. Ah, ok. Uh, okay. Y francés. Ah, es francés. Sí. Ah. sí. So poquito. Oh. So little. Oh, it's in there. Oh. Beef. Welcome. No wonder those perros stick around. Mm. <laughs> Whenever we go through these checkpoints, they want to know where are you going, where are you coming from, and how long are you staying. And the truth is, Drew and I don't really plan ahead much. We kind of feel out the moment. At the same time, last night we slept in the middle of some unknown field of cacti and trees. <laughs> so it's really tricky to tell them where we came from. We kind of came from the middle of nowhere. We're not exactly sure where we're going yet. Don't know how long we're staying here for. Maybe it could be months, it could be weeks. So I just let Drew talk because we kind of change our answers every time. While we may not always know our exact itinerary, there's something that allows us to keep track of the places we wanna go and the best possible route to get there. And that's the Wonderlog app the sponsor of today's episode. It's a free travel planning app that allows you to easily stay organized and share your travel plans. We really love how MapView showcases your route as well as recommends places that you may not already know about. It's truly the easiest way to plan any kind of trip, keeping your itinerary and map in one easy to use app so you're not trying to waste time remembering what day it is and where you're going, what you're doing. At least we could use help with that. And what's even better is that right now they're offering 30% off the pro annual membership, which unlocks features like being able to download your trip plans for offline use, exporting places to Google Maps, and optimizing your route for savings on gas, and automatically syncing your Gmail reservations directly into your trip plans. To sign up for the Wonderlog Pro Annual Membership, click our link in the video description below and download the Wonderlog app for free. Now let's get back on the road. the whale carcass that separates Baja Norte from Baja Sur. Wow, it's official. That's really cool. There's a lot more places in Baja Norte that we still want to see, but right now the weather is still a little bit chilly up there, so we decided why not get to Baja Sur sooner than later, and then we can make it back up to the Norte in time for whale season. That's the hope at least. Hola. Buenas tardes. Hola. Uh, un poquito. poquito. Okay. Sí. ¿Para dónde van? Uh, San Ignacio. San Ignacio. Sí. A sí. uh, Santa Rosalita. Ah, Rosalita. Okay. Tengan cuidado con el ganado. Hay muchas vacas arriba de la carretera. Ah, ok. Yes, lots of cows. Ok. okay. Sí. Alma va a hacer la cooperación por la comunidad de su carro. Okay. Sí. Ok. Uh, okay. Five dollars. Pues hay que en pesos que nos trae un carro. ¿Puedo spray? spray no necesito. Sí. Uh, it's necessary. Okay, okay, okay. okay. See, sí. we go five now. Dollar, five dollars, five pesos for spray. You got five, five pesos? Five dollars or fifteen pesos. Okay. Where do I get spray? There's spray underneath us. Oh. It's like the biggest house. We just got charged fifteen pesos or five dollars to have the underneath of our van sprayed for like verduras things Pest, like pesticides and yeah. animals things that have been on our van you know what's crazy about that too he only gave me on a hundred back 70 so he charged us 30. what yeah oh look at this water crossing here a serious oh. one wow it's trippy looking straight down at the road there well that was quite the water crossing they had a whole military convoy sitting there just making sure nobody gets stranded in the water that was flowing across the road it was really crazy. It was flowing hard. Another benefit of going down to Baja Sur is that we went from Pacific to Mountain Time, automatically gaining one more hour of daylight in the evening. So at least now the sun sets at 545 instead of 445, which is huge and something we were really stoked about because when you live in a van, daylight really affects how much time you spend outside versus being cooped up in your van in the evenings.
Put your hands in the air. It's like a roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa. My ears are popping. We gotta come back up this one day too, don't we? Yeah. One road in and one road back out. Crazy fact, the Trans Peninsular Highway, or Highway 1, wasn't completed until 1973. And before then, the pavement ended just 72 miles south of Ensenada, making the drive in an automobile from Tijuana to Cabo such a rare and amazing feat that the few who did it had to write books about it. Wild donkey. Our first wildlife. Hey, oh. little guy. It's okay. Hey, we don't bite. Just stay safe, okay? Those mountain passes were insane. And I'm grateful that Spirit is a younger van because I have a feeling that a lot of older vans probably have a pretty hard time chugging down that and especially chugging back up. But I'm really grateful that we are now back by the coast where the temperatures are in the 70s and the sun is shining and I can't wait to get to Mulahe because all of our van life friends who have explored Baja before us tell us how much they love Mulahe. So I have a feeling we're gonna love it too. And you guys as well. Ah, topes! Not bad. I was afraid there was gonna be a really bad speed bump there. Yeah, I was. And then our lucky blue on the back just goes kapow! By the end of today, we'll have driven 300 miles and been I've been sitting in this seat for five to six hours. There's been water crossings and livestock, all kinds of rough roads, really limited shoulder, so I've got to be really close to some of the oncoming semis and vehicles. But it's been a long day. Look at that. Oh, so, close. so exciting. Cool spot. Yeah, little lagoon under the highway. Ah, tope. There's actually a warning. <laughs> nice to give me the heads up. Yeah, these just seem to come out of nowhere otherwise. Oh, boing. Wow, pelican. Currently making a U-turn down a very dirty and dusty, bumpy trail because it's pretty tricky to try and decide what spot on iOverlander to choose as our home for the night. Do we stay near the river? Do we stay on the beach? Do we stay closer to town? Is it gonna be loud? We don't really know. You're just always kind of gambling, taking a chance, and trusting the reviews that others have left before us. Backwards we go. <laughs> but tonight, I got a better place to be. Wow, we have this spot all to ourselves. Ah. So ready to spend a few days off the road. I can already see why Mulahe is such a special place to so many people. I think it's going to be for us too. Wow. So beautiful, babes. It's gorgeous. And those colors. I can't think of any place else where I can ride my moto at sunset directly on the beach without anyone else around, no rules, just me, lucky blue, and those amazing hues. He's completely dried out. Whoa, look at his little face. It's a puffer fish. He looks like he was a really friendly little guy. That's wild. 
And you can look all the way inside. Whoa, look at that unicorn spike. That's a gnarly little fish with those teeth. It's not paddleboard weather. I think we're gonna have to find a new bay. It is really rough out there. There's a swell and a wow. lot of wind coming out of the north. Apparently 30 mile an hour winds are coming in, but if we just tuck in a little bit deeper into the Bahia Concepcion, there are some coves that face the south, and I think we'll have some glassy waters to take you guys paddleboarding with us this morning. It'll be really nice to get some activity in after all those miles. We've driven now about 10 hours south of the border, and the further south we go, the more beautiful little beaches and coves and cool little Mexican towns we're gonna discover. And cactuses right on the beach. Yeah, that is super cool, isn't it? Very unique. Are you gonna hop on Lucky Blue? I'll be taking the motorcycle to our next destination. Looks like I'll be captain of the ship today. It's time to roll. Spirit. Okay. Whew. Almost there. I think we've made it. Oh wow. This is a campground. So I just talked to the little guy there. Yeah. At the entrance, or big guy I should say. <laughs> he told us that it'd be 200 pesos just okay. for entry for the day. We can camp if we want, but just even hang out here. It's gonna cost us, which is ten dollars. Yeah. It does look a little windy even to paddle though right now, to be honest. I know. I mean, what do you want to do? Or we just camp here, I don't know. It's the same price. We're here, we're in. Home for the night. That wasn't far at all. Home for the day. <laughs> yeah, and night. And I think we found our spot, friends. Wow. I think we found the spot. We thought we were close to the water before. <gasps> we're real close to the water now. Look at how clear it is. Oh, this is great. Wow. I don't know if we're gonna get very far on that paddle board. I think we're gonna end up right back at our beach every time we try. I know. Well, as long as we can just, you know, go in some <laughs> circles of some sort. I think I get tight on this, but downside is, is that the wind's going out. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to have to do a rescue mission for no, you. Me either. It's like a weird angle, but this would be stellar if it was coming in. With so much adventure still to be had, be sure to subscribe and join us next week for the continuation of our Baja Bound series as we make our way around this wild peninsula before returning back to Europe. Hasta pronto, amigos. We'll see you back here soon.